So good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Um, I hope you enjoyed your lunch. This is the Magis Vol Urgis 2 slot that I got. So I'm going to make my, my speech as nerve-wracking for you as I possibly can. I'd like to thank the organizing committee of this Congress and Kansa, particularly uh, Sue Jans van Rensberg and Dr. Carl Albrecht, for allowing me the opportunity to share with you some facts about the growing threat facing the population of South Africa. Although it has not reached the proportion of the HIV epidemic, skin cancer has become the most common type of cancer in South Africa and is on the increase. The incidence of invasive primary melanoma continues to rise despite all our efforts to educate people on appropriate sunwise behavior. Of particular concern is the age incidence of this deadly tumor striking down young people who are at the start of their careers with young families and the brightest of prospects for adding to the well-being and wealth of our nation. As you can see from this first slide, the incidence peaks in the late 20s to mid 30s. When seeking the causes of this epidemic, this epidemic rise in primary invasive melanoma, one is confronted with the realization that our approach to date of sunwise advice and sunscreens is not bearing fruit. In fact, there is new evidence that the sunscreens might have been overpromoted in their efficiency and that the propaganda machine driving the sunscreen market may have led many a user into a state of false security. We can divide the causes of this epidemic rise in the incidence of melanoma into three main groups. The most important reason, because we can have a direct influence on this cause, is the missed diagnosis. Whereas the medical training of doctors stresses the value of preventative care in the form of the annual pap smear for the prevention of cervical cancer, the digital examination and the annual PSA for the prevention of prostate cancer, the mammograms and the colonoscopies, to name a few, melanoma diagnosis and most critically the early diagnosis thereof must now re re get top priority in pre- and post-graduate level. Early diagnosis implies a diagnosis before the tumor has breached the basal membrane of the dermis, before it has become invasive. When it comes to the treatment of melanoma, early diagnosis is essential. It must be stressed that a melanoma in situ has an excellent prognosis if it is excised correctly. Most GPs and medical caregivers still base their diagnosis on the, cli oh, on the clinical diagnosis, uh, the clinical assessment, such as changes in color, diameter, border and elevation of a skin lesion, asymmetry, or a lesion that is visually different from other nevi. Unfortunately, one has to admit to shortfalls if one relies solely on the clinical examination because early diagnosis is almost impossible this way. This is a quote from uh, Dr. Dagmar Vitica, the chairman of the Melanoma Association of South Africa, and it is so important, so allow me please to repeat it. Unfortunately, one has to admit to shortfalls if one relies solely on the clinical examination because early diagnosis is almost impossible this way. The second reason for the epidemic rise of melanoma is the dramatically increased radiation of the sun due to ozone depletion. Whereas early diagnosis is clearly in our hands, the recovery of the ozone layer might take a little longer, if at all. Measurements of the UV radiation show an increase of about 1,000% in the last seven years. This translates into a sun that has become very dangerous indeed. Most cells in the body will divide a certain number of times and then enter a stage of natural senescence where no further cell divisions takes place. If you look at the skin cell, the same principle applies. If there is an injury to the skin in the form of a cut, burn or abrasion, the body will activate the, re the renewed cellular division by switching off the genes which inhibit such cell division. One of these genes is known as P53. The sun, under certain conditions in summer, between 11 a.m. and 1 p.m., 
has the power to switch off P53. Now, this is frightening in its own right, but it becomes devastating when we learn that the sun could do so after a mere 11 minutes of exposure. This slide, published uh, in, in 2003 by Bennett, shows that under favorable conditions, the skin cell enters a natural... Sin Excuse me, that's the one before this. Uh, yeah, this one. It's a rather complex slide. Uh, it's published by Ben. It shows that under favorable conditions, the skin cell enters a natural senescence and cell division stops. But under less favorable conditions, P16 and P53 are inhibited, leading to severe telomere loss, chromosomal damage, and the inevitable immortalization, immortalization of the cell. When this happens to a melanocyte, we have the beginning of a melanoma. This slide, also published by Bennett, is most important for the last point. Overcome senescence equals malignant transformation. The third cause for this epidemic is public ignorance and malinformation. The public needs to be educated about the dangers of sun exposure, the dangers of sunbeds, and the use of sunscreens. With a dramatic rise in the incidence of melanoma, the awareness and the search for information in the general population has thankfully shown a strong surge. To improve the outcomes and prognoses now, there's only one promising strategy. This is early diagnosis. The consequences of late diagnosis are tragic to the extreme. With our best efforts, modern medicine can only achieve a 7% survival rate after five years if the tumor was found in stage four. This slide shows the American Joint Commissions of Cancer's classification system of melanoma staging. Melanoma in situ, as can be seen on the top, has an excellent 100% survival rate whereas stage four at the bottom has a dismal 7% after five years. This slide shows the staging. This slide shows the staging of melanoma, with stage one being a lesion between one and two millimeters without ulceration, stage two being a lesion between one and two millimeters with ulceration, or a lesion be, uh, between two and four millimeters. Stage three is a lesion with a lymph node involvement, and stage four involves distant metastases. Until as recently as 1991, the process of melanogenesis was thought to, pr to progress as shown in this next slide. The theory held that melanocytes would join to form a nevus, which would go through progressive stages of dysplasia to reach the in situ stage followed by invasive melanoma. The process could, be, could take a certain amount of time and could be monitored by reviewing the macroscopic changes over time. This theory has been trashed. Studies and meta-analyses in many countries conducted under rigid guidelines have revolutionized our thinking on melanogenesis. 